This is the Valley on ESPN. College basketball for you on this Saturday afternoon. Tennessee Tech in town, taking on the Purple Aces of Evansville. Welcome courtside, everyone. I'm Kyle Peach alongside Preston Leinenbach. Good to be with you, partner. Interesting matchup here today. Mm-hmm. Tennessee Tech brings in a pair of pretty good shooting guards. Yeah, if you're into guard play, this is the game for you on both sides on the court here tonight. First, Keyshawn Davidson and Junior Clay is who we're highlighting for the Golden Eagles of Tennessee Tech. Keyshawn Davidson, you see his numbers this year, 12 points per game, but also a nice solid number, three and a half assists. And as we mentioned, overall the guard play is just sensational for Tennessee Tech as Junior Clay really is the catalyst for this team. He can score it, he can dish it out as well. And what's so exciting about him, he can also play defense a little bit to create his opportunities. And not only that, he is an all-around player. He can dish it to the big man down low, but he can also step outside behind the three-point line and hit some jump shots as well. Again, the guard play for Tasty Tech, really exciting to look forward to here today. But also this guy for Evansville, Shamar Givens here in a moment. This guy literally used all of his willpower to bring Evansville back in that game against Southern Illinois on Wednesday night. It was a tough first half. You were here for that one. The second half was all about Shamar Givens. However, Aces come up just a little bit short as Marcus Domas, one of the best players in the Missouri Valley Conference, guarded by Juwan Newton, gave the little Kobe Bryant shimmy, you know, shoulder fake move to hit this game winner at the end. Shimmy push. A little shimmy. (laughs) And you knew he was going to be the one taking the shot, and you more likely knew it was going to go in because he's such a pure shooter for the Slukies. So that's how they started their conference season. The Slukies did with the win over Evansville. The tail of the tape, again, the guard play stands out, but these are two similar teams. Yeah, very similar. In fact, I was going to question our graphics Mm -hmm. guys on those top three columns. (laughs) They're exactly the same, (laughs) these two teams, purple and gold too. So yeah, yeah, purple and purple, purple and orange, uh, purple and gold for Tennessee Tech. It should be a fun one here watching these guards shoot it up and dish it out. And with so much passing, you got to make sure, of course, to take care of the basketball. Right, indeed. Tennessee Tech comes in at 2-5, and five, but they are battle-tested. We'll talk more about their preseason conference matchups as we go. Time to take a look at the starting lineups tonight. A presentation of Cytex, supplying uniforms, linens, mats, and more since 1961. Cytex, the image makers. You take a look at that starting line. We mentioned Davidson, we mentioned Clay, but the other three guys, they've all been kind of had a role in being the third scorer for the Tennessee Tech team at different points this season already. Who will step up? We'll find out as this matchup goes on. Meanwhile, Cytex presents the starters for the Purple Aces. We talked about Shamar mm-hmm. Givens, but obviously a lot of uh, supporting cast there too. Yeah, of course, returning four starters in all from last season. Antoine Smith Jr., you, you know, he's not quite found that consistency yet, but he has shown spots of being a brilliant player for Evansville. Givens trying to pick up where he left off on Wednesday night. This is his first opportunity from long range. Let's see if Evansville gets out of the gate well. They Mm -hmm. did not on Wednesday night. They trailed 13-0 in the game on Wednesday night before they finally got the offense on track. That'll help with the defense getting the takeaway. Evansville did not have many transition opportunities on Wednesday night and miss one here as Newton comes up empty. On the drive, it's Davidson. He's cut off along the baseline. Elevates over Smith and left it short. Big guy battling hard for the rebound and once again, Sela there before the Aces end up with it. Preston, let's take through your keys to the game. A presentation of Old National Bank, your bank for life. And you kind of mentioned it, you know, the the start to this game is so important for Evansville after Wednesday night. They have to compete from the tip. Just coming out with some energy, coming out with some effort, some heart. And they need that consistent secondary score. Normally it's either guys like Evan Kuhlman, Jawan Newton, they've all been there. But yet part of the issue, I think, for Evansville getting that consistency is really they're not at 100% with some of these guys on offense. Uh, I mean, these guys are grinding it out. They're tough. They've been playing through injuries already early in the non-conference season. They just have not been 100%. That's a three put up by Newton. It comes up empty, and both teams 0 for 4 from the floor to start the game. Let's take a look at the keys for Tennessee Tech. They have to play physical for one. Evansville has struggled when the games have gotten really physical so far in the non-conference season. Can they body up the aces? But also find the mismatch. Evansville at times kind of gets stuck in a mismatch mismatch situation off of screens. 
can Tennessee Tech utilize that, especially with the good guard play they have? Givens with a steal, transition, drive, and score. Already a couple turnovers now caused by the Evansville defense. That's a positive that they're using their energy early on here on the defensive end, kind of establish a tone, and then set their offense. A little floater will drop for Clay in the paint to even the score. Two quick strikes for these two teams. It is 2-2, by the way. Here's Newton settling in out top for the Aces. That basket did go in, correct? It did. It's 2-2. Here is Givens just underneath the arc line. And now a drive looking for that quick answer was Davidson. Another run out opportunity created for the Aces. Newton for the flush. Newton. 6-2 Evansville. And the Golden Eagles will call the game's first timeout. Shot clock didn't reset, so Fight has to rush one up. Kind of a heads-up play for Abby Fight, but the shot doesn't go. And yeah, that three-point attempt did not touch the left side of that rim. Nearly another turnover and a loose ball with the possession arrow in favor of the Colonels that will stay here. Evansville with nine turnovers early on in this ball game. Eastern Kentucky with eight. That's definitely something to try to crack down before this ball game's over. Fast back in the ball game for the Colonels. Mentioned both teams. A lot of subs early on. Kirkwood drives and a nice shot by Ariel Kirkwood. She's got four points. Up to an eight-point Eastern Kentucky lead and another Evansville turnover. And a loose ball. It's going to be a jump ball. So we'll stay with the Purple Aces. There's so many factors, again, that go into those type of plays. I already kind of mentioned, depending on how the first pass, the first few seconds of the press and the backcourt goes, you got to have some players come back to you, come to the ball. And if you get a little separation, a little breakthrough, then you can start going away back toward the offensive basket. But it's also a matter of spacing. Owning the spot on the floor when trying to break through the press. Otherwise, you run in the traffic and double teams and sometimes, as you mentioned, maybe a triple team. Tough shot for Abby Fight, and it goes. The 6-1 junior Abby Fight, when she gets going towards the basket, she's hard to stop. Two defenders, doesn't matter. Count the basket. One free throw. We talked to head coach Robin Shells, Robin Sherwells earlier in this season. And you know, when you have a player like Abby Fight coming back as a new coach, it's so great to have a, a, a returner like Abby Fight in your roster. Yeah, it's not too bad to get your first roster going into this year as a new coach. Another offensive oh, foul yes. against Evansville. And you have the likes of Abby Fight, you know, averaging basically a double double, always a threat to put up. Not only the offensive numbers, but the defensive numbers. Taking another look at the charge by Newman. And of course, basically being one of the top players in the Missouri Valley Conference. And fight forces the turnover right there, so Evansville gets it right back. After the third charge call against the Purple Aces in this first half. And another offensive foul against the Purple Aces. Back to back. That one on Celine Dupal. Mentioned her and her foul trouble earlier in the broadcast. That's the thing with Dupont Preston. When you have six foot four, you want to keep her on the floor as much as you can, but it's just things like that you can't do. Yeah, and that's that's a play where she's trying to set herself up for the roll part of the pick, but she's moving toward the basket. You have to make sure you kind of spin on that pivot foot to set your body up for the right angle to receive a roll pass on the pick and roll. Kirkwood has it. Nice move by Kirkwood, and her shot's good. Six points for Ariel Kirkwood. Had a rough start. Was quiet early on. Their last three field goal attempts. Now up to an eight point Easter Kentucky lead. Evansville trying to answer offensively. Maya Clark can't get her three point shot to go. And a baseball pass up ahead looking for Hacker and it's over ahead. 
little bit too aggressive there offensively. Evansville just 6 of 19 from the field at 31 and a half percent. And what really stands out, pressing they're one for eight from beyond the arc. Again, just another kind of circled area for this team to improve upon. They've kind of struggled off and on as a program the last few years from behind the three-point line. But right now, their focus is starting, as we've seen through the numbers going into this game, the first couple of games of the season, starting with the defense, the blocks, the steals. And not doing that. That's another offensive foul for Evansville. They really shoot themselves in the foot, Preston. So Morgan will come out after committing that foul. The second foul on Morgan. And I think you described it perfectly, shooting themselves in the foot. It's got to be frustrating for a new head coach. He's got 12 Evansville turnovers in the last four have been on offensive fouls. The second foul there on Morgan and a traveling violation. Both teams having a hard time taking care of the basketball. It's now 23 combined turnovers for these two teams. And like I said, just kind of a, a, point, a key to the game for Evansville. Didn't necessarily have that as one of my highlights. Let me check my notes here. Yeah, for uh, for Eastern Kentucky. As they've done a pretty good job in their first two games to take care of the basketball, but I think it's just overall the pace and the tempo of this game. And then Newman lost the basketball, but it was last touched off of Carl. And the Aces escape another turnover right there. And really with these turnovers, I guess, give credit to both defenses. Mm -hmm. You know, both teams up at the full court pressure, the, the up-tempo defense that we've seen, and it's doing its job. It's creating turnovers as Abby Fight once again finds the bottom of the net. Just a nice solid inbounds play set up by the Purple Aces. Why not set it up for the number one scorer, Abby Fight? Nice break here for the Curls, and it leads to an open layup. Bridget Fox with the basket. And Fight will try another one. Yes! So Abby Fight heating up here in the second quarter and keeping Evansville within five at 25 20, with 5 20 left here in the second quarter. Johnson goes right at Newman. Offensive foul on her. You get an offensive foul. You get an offensive foul. And there have been of all varieties. We've seen the illegal screen. Lowering the shoulder. So Johnson comes out. That's going to be her second foul. So a handful of players on both sides with a pair of fouls. So Evans will try to make it a one-score game, trailing by five. 